so excited for this morning. Okay, making my way onto my mat that this morning is rather dirty. I've been practicing quite often on it. So for this morning, all I can say is let it be messy. Let it be imperfect. Show up for yourself this morning with curiosity. I like to call it compassionate curiosity because it's gentle, right? It's nurturing. Um, so this morning, as you move, choose, choose you, choose you always. Know that I am simply the guide of this experience, that everything I say is merely a suggestion and that you are who is in control the master of your own body. Nobody knows your physical body like you do. And I trust you. So we'll find our way onto our backs this morning. And if you are largely endowed in the chest, right? If you have large pecs, if you have large breasts, you might get a second strap or a second scarf. And I'll just show you a trick real quick. If you tie it around the upper back over the top, over the top of your chest, and then you make the knot over one armpit or the other. As you lay down, it creates space in your heart center and allows you room to breathe. So however you wanna find yourself on your back this morning, make your way there nice and slow. Let it be cozy. Keep that strap or scarf nearby. And then to honor the low back, you might find a bend in the knees here and plant the pads of the feet. This is gonna allow that natural curvature of the lumbar spine to just settle gently onto the mat. And as you find yourself here, maybe you want the palms of your hands on the earth, maybe you want them on the belly. Choose wherever you rest yourself this morning or this evening. And draw your awareness into the pads of your feet. Feel the pads of your feet weighted down into the mat beneath you. What does the weight feel like pressed gently into the earth? Is there a temperature associated with it? Maybe it's warm or cold. You might take just a slow moment and move the toes across the earth beneath you, noticing the texture you feel. Maybe it's smooth, maybe you're on carpet and it's fuzzy. Just notice, feel that sensation in the toes. And then we'll let the toes settle into stillness along with the rest of the body. Now allow your awareness to travel up into the chest, into the heart center. And on your next inhale, allow the chest to rise and expand. And as you exhale, let the shoulders melt down into the earth. And again, inhale, fill the heart center, fill the lungs. Exhale, let it out nice and slow, release the shoulders, release the back of the upper arms. Breathing again into the chest, into the heart center, filling all the way up and then exhaling, letting it go nice and slow from the body. Continuing these chest breaths, these heart centered breaths at your own pace, filling up, letting go, noticing what the inhale feels like as the heart center expands and stretches, feeling its release as you exhale and let it melt. Your only job here being to witness sensation with curious compassion or compassion and curiosity. Gently noting what it feels like without judgment. And 
Maybe there's an ache in the chest. Maybe it feels incredible each inhale. Both equally valuable to witness. On your next inhale, send the breath down now into the depths of the belly. Feel the belly expand and stretch just like the heart center did. Exhale, release it from the body nice and slow. Inhale, fill the belly, feel it expand and stretch. Exhale, let it go from the body all the way. Continue this for a few more breaths at your own pace, filling the belly, letting it go, noticing how this sensation feels, the stretching, the expansion, and the release on the exhale, the relaxation. Now you might imagine on your next inhale, filling the belly and the heart center all the way and then letting it go, filling the body like a balloon, feeling it stretch and then letting it go. You might continue these deep body breaths or you might find your natural inhale and exhale in the body. Take a moment here before we find any movement to note where tension may have snuck up. You might bring your awareness into your throat center, relaxing through the front of the throat and the back of the neck, letting the shoulders release and melt down into the earth along with the backs of the arms, the lower arms, the palms of your hands and your fingertips melting wherever they are. On your next exhale, you might release any effort in the belly, in the low back, in the glutes and in the hips. From here, we'll bring the pads of our feet together, let the knees fall out wide in Supta Baddha Konasana, so reclined bound angle. This is another posture that honors the low back while opening up through our inner hip. You might continue to send those deep breaths into the belly. And then on your next inhale, let's stretch the arms up long overhead. So we're gonna press our fingertips up overhead as we inhale into the belly. Exhale, let the effort release, let the belly melt as the air escapes the body. Inhale, fill the belly up, press through the fingertips. And as you do, you might press the pads of the feet together Exhale, release all effort in the body, let it melt with the breath. Again, inhale, pressing through the fingertips, pressing the pads of the feet together, stretching long through the torso, through the arms, and then exhale, melt, release effort. Become like jelly in the sun, we relax onto the earth beneath us, fully supported. When you're ready on your next inhale, again, press through the fingertips, press the pads of the feet together, and then relax, exhale, release. Let's do this two more times at the pace of your own breath, pressing through the pads of the feet, pressing up and out through the fingertips, through the arms, exhaling, relaxing back down onto the mat, melting all effort. Once more, pressing, pressing, and then releasing, letting it all go. Bring the knees back together, plant the pads of the feet. Now you might leave your arms up here if that feels good. You might also bend at the elbows, coming into what I call goalpost or cactus arms. You might bring the palms of your hands to your belly again. You get to choose where to be in this moment, but we'll walk the pads of our feet about hip distance apart. And then we're gonna find some little twists. So inhale deeply into the belly when you're ready. 
On an exhale, we're gonna let our knees fall over to the left. We'll come up onto the blade edges of the knees, letting them hang heavy. And let's just relax here. So we're releasing effort in the low back, in the low belly. And to do this, you might send your breath there. So on your next inhale, imagine your breath filling the low belly, stretching the muscles in the low belly and the low back, and then exhale, let those portions of your body melt, let them become effortless here. Again, inhaling, filling, stretching the low back, stretching the low belly, exhale, melt, release all effort, let the knees grow heavy. On your next inhale, let the knees rise towards the ceiling, plant the pads of the feet for just a moment. As you exhale, let the knees fall towards the right, come up onto those blade edges. And then stay here in stillness once more, breathing, stretching, letting the knees grow heavy. If the feet slide here, let them slide a little bit. This posture doesn't have to be anything you might think of as perfection or correct needs to feel right in your body, your body. And that means that there is no pain. That means that the sensation is intense enough to draw your awareness, your curiosity, to let you explore where in the body you feel it what it feels like, a stretching, a pulling, an aching, but not so intense, this sensation that we wanna run from it or our muscles are clenching or we're trying to distract. So finding that middle ground, letting the knees grow only as heavy as to find that place. And on your next inhale, let the knees again rise towards the ceiling. As you exhale, let them fall towards the left. And we'll move with the breath here, inhaling, knees rise, exhaling, they fall towards the right. At the pace of your breath, feeling this in your body, the back and the forehead. As you exhale, really focusing on letting those knees wait. On your next inhale, let the knees settle skyward, planting the pads of the feet here, finding your breath in stillness. And we're gonna grab your scarf, your strap, wherever it is. And then keeping the right foot planted in the mat, I'm gonna take the midline of my strap, gra grabbing either end, and I'm gonna sweep it over or put it over the ball of my foot. And that's the upper portion of my foot. The reality is we just want a cozy spot for your foot and your leg to be supported. So you're holding your leg with your arm here, the ball of your foot or the top half of your foot at least is pressing into this support, pressing into this strap. And then just let the backs of the arms weight down towards your mat. We're just stretching through the hamstring here through the back of the leg. You might gently pull your leg towards the torso, towards your chest. Only as far as allows that sensation that we're looking for enough to keep you curious and witnessing, but not so much you run, distract or clench. Notice if you can release any effort in the glutes, any tension in this right leg here where the knee is bent. You might even let that right knee fall out towards the right come up onto the blade edge, that outside blade edge of that right foot, and open up through the hips. 
as we stretch this left hamstring here. And then if you wanna do some nerve flossing with me, you're gonna point your toe pressing into the strap or scarf as you pull back towards your torso, keeping this tension, pressing, pressing and holding, and then release it, press through the heel now and flex your toes towards your body. So we're actively pressing through the heel of the foot. We're flexing the toes towards our body, hanging out in that place of compassionate curiosity, that sensation that we can witness. And then again, point the toe, reversing that motion, pressing the ball of the foot into the strap. And you might even imagine pressing your heel down towards your mat, towards the earth. All right, reverse this, press through the heel, flex the toes towards the body. Breathing into the belly as we do, releasing all effort in the face here. We don't want to engage in the portions of our body that are not being engaged by this strap directly. So if that means releasing through that right outer hip or that right inner thigh, do that now. And then point the toe, press the ball of that foot in, and maybe you might imagine drawing your heel down towards your body. This pointing and flexing, this nerve flossing of our sciatica, it really is like flossing the nerve. It pulls it back and forth through the tissue and creates more space for it in the body. So if you experience numbness, tingling, pinching, hip, low back pain, this can be helpful with that for many bodies. So you might try it out. All right, let the foot rest in the strap now, releasing all effort, right? We don't have to move a lot to put in an enormous amount of effort and sensation in the body. We'll take this strap in our left hand and I like to grab my strap um, by lengthening my left arm completely out and just grabbing wherever um, uh, creates the most ease with my extended arm. So you might keep your arm bent and weighted down towards the earth, you decide. But once you find that grip, you're gonna allow your left leg to fall open towards the left, but only as far as it's gonna go. And when you're holding onto this strap like this, especially if your right knee is uh, weighted towards the right, you're gonna find that ooh, it doesn't take a lot of motion to really feel the stretch in the inner left thigh. So we're just holding that left leg open towards the left. If we wanna experience a little less sensation, you might let that strap lengthen and let the foot sink away from the torso. If you wanna experience a little more intense sensation to explore, you might pull the strap closer to the torso, lifting the foot up a little higher towards the face. So find where you wanna be and then focus on relaxing through that inner thigh here, right here. Can we bring ease? Few more breaths here. Just allow your awareness to travel into the sensation that you're feeling. Where is it? What does it feel like? A stretching, a pulling, a tingling. Can you relax the surrounding area of that sensation? Can you invite it to release here in this moment? And whether it does or whether it doesn't, doesn't matter. Take a moment to imagine what it might feel like. And then we're gonna draw that leg skyward. Ooh, that right knee now in alignment with the ceiling. Coming back onto the pad of that right foot here. Just take a moment, this is a lot for the hips. And then when you are ready, we're gonna take our strap now in the right hand, right arm extended, and we're gonna come into a twist. So only as far over as we can go, keeping both shoulder blades 
on the mat. For me, it's not very far, right? It's just across my body. Taking the left leg over to the right. Hang out here for just a moment. Maybe the body starts to shake, but if it starts to ache, bend the knee, bring some relief here, right? We're not here to bring pain. We're simply here to experience sensation. And then we're gonna turn this into a twist all the way. So allowing this left leg to swing all the way over to the right, that left shoulder is gonna come up off the mat. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But coming into this deep, full twist, as much or as little as the body would like, I like to relax my left shoulder back down towards the mat. It does not touch in my body. And then I rest my left hand on my rib cage. It brings ease to my shoulder here. You might also tee your arm out wide or do goalpost arms if you want to open up even more through the heart center. Find where you want to be. It might feel good to take that left hand and massage the outer left glute here. Notice that sensation. And then when you're ready, we're gonna roll back onto our backs. Woo. Release that foot. <laughs> We're going to shake it out. You might plant the feet, let the knees swing from left to right. As much or as little feels good. We've done a lot of work here. And then we'll get ready for the other side. So I'm going to walk my heels a little closer to my glutes. Make sure my feet are about hip width apart or a little wider if that feels good. I'm going to take my strap over the ball of my right foot. And then again, I'm just going to let the backs of my arms weight down towards my mat. I'm trying to create as much effortlessness from my upper body as I can while I gently invite my right leg towards my chest. Only as much as allows for my breath. It might feel nice to move your belly aside here a little bit before gently pulling that right leg towards the heart center. Finding that sensation, getting curious, becoming witness to what you feel, letting it be enough. That's where the healing is at. That's where the practice is at. That is what yoga truly is. It's not making these perfect or exact shapes. It's choosing these shapes that bring sensation that honors your experience so that you can explore it fully. It brings the most rapid relaxation, release, strength. It's incredible what we do here in gentleness. All right, let's find some floss. If you like pressing the ball of that foot, pointing the toe, ooh, holding, holding, holding. You might feel the legs shake. Tremors are all right. As long as we're not feeling pain, as long as this discomfort is not so intense, we want to escape. When you're ready, press through the heel, flex the toes towards the body. We're reversing this motion. Really press through that heel. Note where you feel in the body as you do. Is it in the outer hip? Is it in the back of the leg? Will be the low back. There's no right or wrong answer. We're here just to experience and discover. 
When you're ready, point the toe, pressing the ball of that foot in. Continuing to breathe. Sometimes when we exert effort, we tend to shallow or hold our breath. You might consciously relax through the belly as you press through the ball of the foot. Just to counteract any desire to clench, tense, or shallow the breath. Last time, we'll press through the heel, flex the toes towards the body. We're moving slow here. All right, relax that foot. You might take a little bend in the knee, give it a little break, knowing that you can bend in the knee anytime that you would like. All right, both sides of that strap in your right hand. I'm extending my arm long before I grip. That's how I like it. You might like it down here. We're gonna let that right leg fall out towards the right here. Ooh, as far as it'll let you go. and be present. And then you might remain here or you might let that left knee fall out towards the left, coming up on the blade edge of that left foot. And then your biggest job here is breathing into the low belly, filling it all the way up and then letting it all the way out. One more time. All right. We'll switch sides. The left hand grabbing both sides of the strap here. And we're coming into this twist, but only as far as allows both shoulder blades to remain on the mat. So I'm moving really slow to find that space. I'm not swinging my right leg over to the left very quickly. I'm just noticing how my balance changes. I'm noticing how it feels in my right shoulder blade, that pressure as I move. And I went too far, so I'm gonna come back just a little bit. Again, your arms might be in goal post. They might be above your head or on your rib cage. Breathing here focusing on allowing that right shoulder to release down into the mat. On your next inhale, fill the belly deeply. As you exhale, continue this twist all the way. Ooh, letting that right shoulder come up completely. Ooh. Letting that right arm settle where it feels good, right? We're not here to do the most. We're here to experience and witness the most sensation. And it turns out we don't need to do a lot to find it. Now you can come out of this twist anytime you like or you might settle in here for three or four more breaths, noticing where in the body you can release effort, maybe in the glutes and the low back, maybe in the shoulders and the heart center. If the body shifts, let it shift. When you're ready, rolling back onto your back, Let's release the leg. Wonderful. We're going to find, again, some windshield wipers. We'll walk our feet out about mat width apart. I do mine just outside my mat. And then again, on an exhale, let the knees fall towards the left. Inhale, they rise up. Exhale, fall towards the right. Inhale, they rise. Exhale, opposite direction. A few more times at the pace of your own breath. Focusing on the exhale and the release, the melting.
On your next inhale, let the knees remain upright. Heel toe your feet a little wider now. And this time we're gonna press our knees inward towards one another gently. We'll come up onto the inside blade edges of our feet. And you might focus your awareness onto the inside of your thighs and gently press them down towards the earth. Only enough. to get curious with that sensation, noting can you release effort in the jaw and the tongue? Can you let the heart center and the back of the arms melt into the earth? Can you relax all effort in the belly? Let it be gentle, let it float. Let your breath be natural and easy here. On an inhale of your choice, release this effort from your inner thighs, let the knees rise up. We'll bring the knees back towards one another, I'm gonna invite you to roll over to the left or right side of your body. Doesn't matter which side, we'll take a moment to support our head with our arm, if that feels good. <sighs> Finding some effortlessness here. Feeling this new portion, the side of your body now pressing into the earth, no longer the back. What does it feel like to have the side of your body settled into the earth? Maybe it feels a little achy in the hip bones, the low back from the work that we've done. Maybe it's relaxing and restful. Maybe it's all of those things at once. From here, we'll press ourselves up into a seated posture. And this is where I'm gonna recommend that you grab a bolster or a blanket, something that you can sit your sits bones up on. So for today, I'm gonna use a blanket. In past class, we've used bath towels, rolled up sweatshirts. There's no wrong way to be and then find a seat. I'm gonna take a moment. All right, wonderful. I'm just making sure everything is still working. <laughs> Finding that seat on the prop, you're gonna scoot to the edge of it like you would sitting on the edge of your seat. This tilts the pelvic bowl, it helps align each vertebra and then grab that strap, that scarf, that leash, whatever you've got here. And I'm going to not cross my legs, but open them up wide. So find your wide-legged stance. And we're not looking for the widest of wide-legged unless that is what your soul is asking for this morning. We're looking for an easy wide leg. And you might wiggle, I like to do this, wiggle back and forth, settle my sits bones down onto the mat or my bolster or blanket and just feel supported. So finding a slice that brings ease, right? Knowing that each day is different. Some days you might want that big slice, little intensity. Some days you might want a little slice, some gentleness you know and you choose but as you find your slice press gently through the heels of your feet you might pull the toes flexing them towards the body not an intense active um, um, effort but a gentle one and what this does is it engages our kneecaps it engages the muscles on around the top of our thigh and it um honors the body from here, we'll grab the strap. We're gonna open up and warm up our shoulders. So grabbing the midline of the strap, we'll brace our hands about knee width apart. So I'm laying my strap over my knees 
I'm grabbing it at my knees. And then on an inhale, I'm gonna send my arms out and up and I am pulling my strap tight as I do this. I'm gonna open up to the heart center. Now the point is not to fully rotate, it's simply to just press the heart center forward. You might let the gaze rise towards the ceiling as you pull the strap in opposite directions here and breathe. Inhale, fill the heart center, let it draw forward. As you exhale, let the arms come down. Keep that gentle tension. We'll move with the breath now. Inhaling, arms come up. Chest rises, gaze rises. Exhale, reverse that motion. Inhale, rise up. Heart center draws forward. Exhale, let it go. Three or so more times at the pace of your own breath. Moving, experiencing the richness of this sensation. Does it feel good to press your heart center a little further forward or maybe draw it a little further skyward? Exploring. On your next exhale, settle into stillness. Now we'll extend the length here about 12 to 18 inches. So better too much than too little. We can always adjust. And this time we are going to experiment with that full range of motion. And there is no award for getting there. Um, stop where it feels good. Stop where your body says, please. It'll be different every day. And the more you meet yourself in these places, the easier it is to have that conversation with your body. All right, finding this big, nice gap, way wider than my knees. Inhale, I'm sending my arms up. As I exhale, I'm drawing them back. And as I find tension, I'm like, oh, lengthening here. I don't wanna hurt myself, right? I'm not here to cause myself pain. All right, we move with the breath, inhaling to rise, exhaling to lower. Inhaling to rise, keeping that tension, exhaling to lower. A few more times, inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. And it might be right here. This might be where. Let it be that place that you stop to honor. Let your yoga practice today, let the meat of it be just meeting your body with reverence, with curiosity, noticing what it likes and what it doesn't like, and being okay with that today. When you're ready on that exhale, arms come forward, release the strap, release effort. Beautiful. Set that strap aside. We're not going to use it for a little while. We'll bring the back of your left hand towards the inside of your left thigh, opening up through the side body here. I'm going to let the back of my hand travel down the inside of my thigh. As far as, it, as far as it goes, right? As far as it feels good. And it might feel good right here. We let the back of our hand, we let the back of our arms sort of support us in this stretch. And then when you're ready, we're gonna sweep that right arm directly up overhead. And then if it feels good, I might sink the back of that left hand a little further down my leg. And you might have the elbow propped up on top of your thigh here. Beautiful, do it. Offer yourself some goodness. Offer yourself some support here because what we wanna focus on is stretching through the right side of the body, right? Stretching length into the right side of the body. When you're ready, rise up. Let's switch sides. Back of that right hand finds the inside of the right thigh and we're gonna follow it all the way down before we sweep that left arm up. Finding our sweet spot of sensation, knowing we can always go further if we want to. 
The body is asking for it. But the objective is to experience and witness the stretch on the left side of the body. And you might press through that left hand, the fingertips of that left hand, as you press out through the heel of that left foot, further bringing sensation to this lengthening. When you're ready, rise up, release. Let's find this again on the opposite side of the body. We'll do this once more. Back of that left hand, traveling down the inside of the thigh, sweeping that right arm up. And you might imagine as you grow long on the right side of the body, sending your breath into the right side of the rib cage here. And as you inhale, feeling it expand, as you press through the fingertips, press through the heel of that right foot, continue to grow long in the body here. Bracing that left elbow on the thigh. Supporting your body and letting those inhales expand that right rib cage. And maybe you feel it and you're like, yeah, that's the breath. I can definitely feel that right rib cage. And maybe you're like, what the heck, Danae? Know that simply imagining it is powerful. There's benefit. On an inhale, rise up. Ooh, that was a ton of effort. We'll find this on the opposite side of the body. Back of that right hand slips down the inside of the thigh. We press out and up to the fingertips of that left hand, breathing into the left side body here, breathing into that left rib cage. Pressing through those fingertips. Can you bring ease to your jaw and your cheeks here? You might settle into that right forearm, resting that elbow on the thigh, experiencing the left side of the body. On an inhale, rise up. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. We're going to find tabletop and I'm going to recommend that you grab something squishy and comfy and cozy to put underneath your knees and and you might have knees of steel and if you do skip that part, but if you are like 99.9% .9 of the rest of adults. Uh, grab something squishy for underneath your knees, because when we find our way in tabletop. We want our awareness to be filled with what is happening in the torso of our body and not in our kneecaps, right? So let's give them some love and then make our way into tabletop. So palms of the hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips. And you might, if this is really hard on your wrists, if you have um, injury, you might come up to the edge of a couch or your bed place your forearms up. Everything that we're doing on our hands and knees, you can do with your forearms against the edge of your bed or the edge of your couch. So advocate fully for your form here. Find your cozy spot. And then when you are ready, from this neutral spine, we're gazing down, keeping our neck in alignment with the rest of our spine here. And then begin to soften through the belly. Releasing effort in the belly, let it hang low. We spend so much time clenching our bellies and holding them in. So let the effort go, feel the belly drop down towards the earth. And as you release effort in the belly, release any effort in the spine. As you do this, the belly is going to droop low. Your tailbone is going to curl up towards the sky. Right? This is what we're doing. We're releasing. You might give the hips a little jiggle to the left and the right. Just ensuring that you're not holding any tension in the low belly, in the low spine. We're letting it hang like a cow. And then settle into stillness here. On your next inhale, you're going to send your heart center forward and your gaze up. So now it's like your tailbone wants to touch the back of your head. You might imagine there's a string between the two of them and you're trying to pull it taut or shorten it as much as possible. 
Letting that belly hang low. And we'll hang out here. We're stretching through the front of the heart center, through the front of the throat. If you cough, enjoy it. This is your body saying yes, please, to this movement. On an exhale, we'll curl the spine, pressing through the palms of the hands as we do this. We tuck our tailbone in, the head hangs heavy. And our tailbone, again, is tucking towards the head, this time the forehead. And you might imagine there's a string from the forehead to your tailbone, growing tight beneath your belly, pressing through the palms of the hands, feeling this cat-like curl in your spine. And continue to breathe into the belly as you do this. Notice how it feels to take breaths in this cat-like posture. On your next inhale, drop the belly low, gaze comes up into cow. Tailbone curling up towards the back of the head. Continue to remain here for a few breaths, releasing through the belly, reminding yourself what this posture feels like in its fullness. The fullness of letting go. On an exhale, curl the spine to cat, tuck that tailbone, let the head hang heavy. Hang out here. You might even give the head a little jiggle back and forth just to make sure you're not putting any effort there. You might even wiggle the hips back and forth nice and slow. Notice what it feels like as you curl the low spine to shift these hips left and right. And then on your next inhale, drop the belly low, come back to cow, gaze rises. Exhale, curl the spine to cat. We'll do this two rounds of breath at your own pace. On your next inhale, come back to a neutral tabletop. We're gonna walk our hands towards our body. I'm gonna rise up onto my shins. I'm gonna do a little bit of hip opening before we end our class in final Shavasana. Time has moved by so quickly. So when you are ready, we'll step the left leg forward. And this is also a place where that knee cushion is really, really valuable. I'm gonna bring my hands to my hips. I'm gonna draw my thumbs towards one another, towards my spine, leaving a gap there. I find the palms of my hands on my low back. From here, I'm gonna draw my shoulders towards one another, opening up through the heart center. And I might remain here breathing with each inhale, heart center rising towards the sky. Exhale, letting those elbows press towards one another. If you'd like to bring in some more hip movement here, you might press the hips gently forward with the palms of your hands. Breathing. Being. Allowing the face to remain effortless. Letting the heart rise with each inhale. And then on an exhale, shift the hips back. If you had them forward, we're gonna step this leg back, switch sides. Stepping the right foot forward. Palms of the hands, find the low back again. Shoulder blades squeeze towards one another. And again, you might be breathing here, inhaling, rising tall through the heart. Expanding through the chest, exhale, shoulders melt down, elbows press towards one another. If you'd like, pressing those hips forward with the palms of the hands, giving some love and some stretch to those hip flexors. If you spend a lot of time seated at a computer or a desk, this is a beautiful, or driving, this is beautiful work for the body but it can also be intense because of those things. All right, on an exhale, come back to neutral. Sweep that right leg back in. We're gonna make our way onto our back. So 
We've done almost about an hour of yoga and somatics, which is wild to me. But make your way onto your back. We'll end practice where we started. You might grab that blanket that you are seated on and use it as a pillow. We want to make this time cozy and luscious and squishy, but we'll make our way onto our backs with our knees bent. And before settling in to final Shavasana, we'll take just a little bit of a gentle twist. So from here, let's come into happy baby or half happy baby. And what that looks like is we're gonna bend our knee towards the chest, but really more so out towards our armpit. So I'm creating space for my belly here. And I might show you on the other side just so it's a little bit easier. I'm pulling my belly out from inside my thigh. I'm creating space for my knee to sort of tuck up towards my armpit. And then I might be bracing the outside of my knee or the back of my thigh here. I might be bracing my ankle peace signing my big toe or grabbing the outside of my foot. So find wherever you want to be for this happy baby, but we're going to do a half happy baby. So bracing yourself where it feels good, you might take a gentle rock to the left and the right. So massaging the low back, just finding a little movement, getting comfortable or more comfortable with this posture. And then from here, if you'd like, we can turn this into a twist and it's a it's a pretty decent sized one so taking the pad of this foot we're going to rock all the way over to the opposite side of our body let the pad of the foot land on the mat now where is it going to land anywhere maybe up towards the body mine likes a lot of space so i like to give my foot space from my body and then that shoulder blade again we just want to melt the upper back onto the mat whether it makes it there or not isn't isn't the point the point is that we allow the body to relax and release we allow wherever we are and whatever we're doing to be enough and the body knows when it's being celebrated it knows when it's being held in regard with kindness and it reacts accordingly. When you're ready, come out of this twist, release back onto your back. Ooh, that was a lot. Plant that foot. You might wiggle the hips out just a little bit before finding happy baby on the opposite side. Again, pulling your belly Ooh, gently away from your thigh as you draw your knee up towards your armpit and bracing where it feels good. I'm going to brace behind my knee this time. And then if you'd like finding that rock back and forth, back and forth. Maybe you're using your elbow as an assist with that rock, just creating some ease, a little playfulness maybe. And then if you'd like, swinging that leg all the way over, letting it land wherever it does. <sighs> Hanging out in this twist. And you might, again, Notice if you can melt through the low belly and the low back here. If you can release through the heart center. And then when you're ready, rock back onto the back. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We're going to take our final Shavasana. So this is four to six minutes that we'll spend together in stillness. And Shavasana, also known as corpse pose, is often spent with legs and arms splayed out wide, taking up all the space, letting our bodies melt into stillness. But you can also take Shavasana with a pillow or a bolster underneath the knees. You might take Shavasana in bound angle with the knees falling out wide 
wherever you want to be, find this posture of surrender, find the letting go. And once you've settled down, releasing the body into as much effortlessness as you can provide for it, let your awareness travel down into the toes of your feet. And you might give them a little wiggle and then let them release into stillness. Let that release travel up into the ankles and the calves, relaxing the knees and the thighs, your hips and your glutes. Releasing any effort in the low belly. On your next inhale, you might feel the heart center rise and expand. And as you exhale, let it melt along with the shoulders. Your upper arms. Your lower arms the palms of each hand and your fingertips. Let it all melt as your awareness gently travels into your throat center, releasing effort. Let the tongue float in the mouth. The lips relax along with the jaw and the cheek. The brow unfurrows and the shoulder and the forehead melts. Relaxing even the scalp on your head. Can you imagine what it might feel like to relax the hairs on your head? And as we spend the next couple minutes in stillness, know that your mind is going to wander. It's just trying to help. But in this moment, when it is trying to help, we simply acknowledge that it's thinking, that it's planning, that it's reminiscing or judging. And then we let it go as we exhale, releasing that thought from the body, letting it float away and allowing our awareness to travel back into the physical body, back into the sensations of our breath, the expansions of each inhale, the relaxation and release that comes with each exhale. You might explore the temperature of your breath, the pathway it travels in and out of your body, taking time in this stillness to explore these things within yourself. Before we begin to awaken the body, you might take one last opportunity to scan through your body gently, noticing where tension may have cropped up, maybe in the shoulders, the back of the neck, the glutes, the back of the thighs, 
Take one more opportunity to let it all go. Let the tension melt away from your body, every muscle giving up. Just for a moment. Anything it's holding on to. When you're ready, and only when you're ready, knowing that you can remain here in Shavasana for as long as you like. But when you are ready to begin reawakening, invite a deeper breath into the body. Feel the belly expand. Let this deepened inhale be what begins to awaken you. A deeper breath, feeling the muscles stretch and expand. And you might invite that gentle movement into the tips of the fingers and the toes. You might rub the pad of your thumb against the tips of the rest of your fingers, feeling sensation knowing that the awakening is as much of a discovery as any other part of our practice today. You might even feel each finger with the pad of your thumb from top to bottom. Notice the pad of your thumb. Notice the sensation you feel in each finger. And then continue to invite this movement into the wrists and the ankles. You might take some ankle circles. And then begin almost like you're awakening from a nap as you lay here, stretch and move. You might take a yawn deep into the body and somatics this is pendicular movement this yawning and stretching mm. curling of the spine explore movement explore awakening <sighs> finding any more movement in the body that feels good and then you might take that bend in the knees and in your own time, roll over to the left or right side of the body again, supporting the head with the arm. Before making any moves to end our practice, take a moment here to notice, to note, anything that you want to take with you as our practice comes to a close any sensations or discoveries any release let it soak into your body now let it permeate every cell and then if there's anything that didn't serve you in this practice Maybe a cue that was given or a judgment you made about yourself. Let it go. Release it from your body on your next exhale. We don't need to carry it with us anymore. We take what belongs to us from this practice and we feel empowered to leave everything else behind. From here, Press yourself up into an easy seated posture. And by easy, I mean you might find that bolster again. You might sit cross-legged. You might sit in bound angle. We bring ease to the physical body here. Relaxing through the face. Softening the gaze or closing your eyes. 
On your next exhale, let the shoulders melt away from the ears. An option to bring the palms together at the heart center in Anjali Mudra. As you inhale, you might feel your heart center rise to meet your thumbs. As you exhale, you might take a gentle bow in the head. The first thing we do when we end practice is we thank ourselves for showing up for it. Even if it feels weird or silly, Take a moment and with your next inhale, let wash over you a gratitude. Let it fill you up. You chose to do the hard thing. You chose what was unfamiliar. You chose to explore and to let go. Thank yourself for that effort, the willingness. Thank you for practicing with me today. The light and the dark in me, the imperfections, because that's all there is. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Seize the light and the dark in you. Thank you for practicing with me.